Hi guys, my name is Chris Hoard. Today I'm going to give you some tips on setting up your photography studio. So I've been in my current studio for about five years now, and this is actually the second studio I've had. Now, about eight years ago, I got my first studio because I thought that's what you did as a photographer. You went out, you got a studio, and if I'm honest, I didn't really know why I needed it, and I certainly didn't know how to use it. So since taking the second studio on five years ago, I've learned so much about the reason of why I have a studio and what I can do for my business. And it's certainly changed the way my business works. Having this space has opened up so many possibilities to me to develop the commercial side of my business, the training side of my business as well. And I get not everyone has the ability to go and get a studio, but today I'm gonna to share some tips on how you can make your studio work better for you. So my first tip is think IKEA. Now, if you don't know what IKEA is, it's a Swedish company who sell loads of furniture and loads of room ideas, but one thing their catalogs are great at is showing you how to use space effectively. Now, whether you've got a big open space or a very tight space for your studio, how you use that space is really important. So even having a browse through IKEA's catalog or looking on the website for ideas on how to use every single space you can, you'll pick up some tips there just to understand how to use wasted wall space or even ceiling space where you need to. Now, with this, you're trying to make the most of your space, keep your floors clear as much as you can. The more you can keep off your floor and on walls and ceilings, cupboards, all that sort of stuff, the more space you've got to move around and work within. There's nothing worse than working in a really cramped area when you're kicking over light stands or tripping over props, all that sort of thing. So it's important to try and keep your floors as clear as possible. And utilize every space you can. You can see in my studio here, I've got a little space on the walls where I hang my backgrounds. And it's a perfect storage space for my lighting stands, meaning they're tucked away, they can't be touched by anyone, and they're very, very safe as well. Now, if you're lucky enough to have tall ceilings and the space to hang things on your walls, if you're not gonna use it for anything else, then use that space to keep your floors clear. Now, as you can see in my studio, I hang all my soft boxes open on the walls, meaning they're out of the way, but they're easy to take off the wall and put straight onto my lights, minimizing the time, putting up soft boxes, but also making sure they're not just lying around and easy to trip over. Natural light, don't underestimate just how important this could be to your studio. So within my main studio here, where I'm shooting now, there isn't a great deal of natural light. I've got a couple of windows just this side of me, but they're blocked off mostly by the infinity curve I've got built in here. In my second shooting area, I've got a fantastic window that lets so much beautiful natural lighting. Now it's on the opposite side of where the sun tends to shine for the majority of the day, which means I get a lovely soft diffuse light, which actually bounces off the buildings across the road and comes back through the window. So it's all day, every day, I get a lovely soft light through there, which I can use to my advantage to create some stunning portraits. So one thing also to remember with natural light, as good as it is to have it, you need to be able to kill it as well. So using blackout black or diffusion panels, something that totally minimizes that natural light when you need total darkness in your ambient light. So if you have natural light, make sure you utilize that space. What setups could you fit within that area? So for instance, in my small shooting room, which, is, which has got natural light, I've got three or four different areas set up that are ready to go all day, every day to shoot with natural light. Shooting spaces. So having different shooting spaces you can shoot on in your studio, either as permanent fixtures or as something you can put up and down very, very quickly, gives you much more options in terms of shooting and diversity in your studio. Now, as you can see this background behind me, I actually made this one myself using tile adhesives and paint. I'll put a link below to that blog showing you just how we made that. But across my studio, I've got nine or 10 different shooting areas that are always set up, which means I can move around with ease and change the look of the images I want to get very, very quickly without having to change light stands, backgrounds, and all that sort of stuff. Textures can help a lot. Now this wall behind me is very textured. I use tile adhesive to get that texture through that. And beyond that, I've got brick walls in this studio. I've got some wood paneling. So I've got loads of different shooting areas, which help imitate that look of being outside somewhere much more urban. Now, one of the advantages of a studio these days, you can pick up backgrounds that mimic these sorts of things. And actually the textures, although it's a flat surface, show really, really well in these because of the way they've been designed. And a simple one, 
using paper backgrounds. Now I use creativity backgrounds for my background roles. This is another sponsored ad. They provide me with so many different options using different color backgrounds, particularly the color gray. Now I can change that color gray and I'm gonna go into that in a bit more detail soon. But the rest of the colors in there, whether I'm using pinks, reds, yellows, blues, give me loads of different options, particularly when I add light to that, so I can make that look however I want. Now working with a gray background has huge, huge advantages, so much so that I've painted a full wall of my studio, this particular color gray. Now the color has changed, so it used to be Dulux Storm, but I'll put a link below to the new name for that paint color, and I'm gonna tell you why it's really important to me. Using a gray background and using some gels, I can change this to any color I want. Just by adding a background light with a gel attached to the right luminosity, this can create so many different effects, whether I'm mixing colors, I keep them with the same color in there. It provides infinite possibilities, particularly if you don't have the space to hang paper rolls. Now, when I first created a headshot area with this sort of technique, I did it on a four foot wall. You don't need a big space to do this, but the possibilities it gives you, as you can see from the images I'm showing you now, are infinite for this. You can create so many different looks, so many different colors, and by changing the intensity of the light that's on the background, change just how deep those colors are. So probably one of the more boring things to talk about in this video, but probably one of the biggest space and time savers I've got light stands. So I use two main types of stands in my studio. I use auto poles and I use the automatically open light stands from Pixabro. I don't know the proper name for them. I should look it up. Now the auto poles are fantastic because they've got such a small footprint. The footprint's literally about this big, you know, a couple of inches around. They clamp between the floor and my ceiling in the studio, meaning that I'm taking up very little space. If I've got people in, it's very hard for them to trip over them. And they take a lot of weight by using the Monfrotto super clamps. I can clamp multiple lights, backgrounds, all sorts of different things to these stands. It gives me a lot of space saving, but also a lot of possibilities. Now the automatic light stands are great as well because I can literally pick them up and move them around the studio without having to screw and tighten and do all that usual stuff you do with light stands. Literally you pick them up, the legs collapse, you put them down, they come back out, meaning I can move from one shooting area to another shooting area very, very quickly and very, very efficiently. And a boom arm is another stand I use in my studio quite regularly. The biggest and most important thing with boom arms is to make sure you weight them correctly. There's nothing worse than if you put a big heavy light and a big heavy modifier on one end and don't weigh it down on the other end, it's gonna tip over. So you have to make sure you do this safely. But again, if you've got high ceilings in your studio, a boom arm gives you lots of possibilities to be able to lift that light up as high as you can and get a lovely soft light for that or whatever effect you want to get. One type of lighting stand I don't have in my studio but I'd love to have is a pantograph system. Now it probably wouldn't work in my main shooting area but it certainly would in my smaller studio area. Now I'm gonna add a link below to Barry Mangfad's blog and video that he did on this. So he designed his own pantograph system in his small studio for a very minimal cost. Now the way he did it is very, very clever. I'm not even gonna to try to explain it because he's much more practical than I am in these sort of terms. So I'll link that video below and make sure you go and watch it. And don't forget to subscribe to Barry's channel while you're there. So probably one of the most important parts in studio that I haven't mentioned yet is lighting. Now I use battery lighting for 99% of the studio work I do as well as location work. And there's a few key reasons to why I do that. Ease of movement, again, much like the stands I said earlier on, because my lights aren't plugged into a power source, I can literally pick them up and move them around with very little hassle. And it's much easier to be able to go from one shooting area to another shooting area without having to unplug and plug back in. Now it goes without saying, these are much safer rather than having wires trailing around the studio, especially if you've got young ones in. Having the ability to power through your light with a battery means you're taking away all those trip hazards. It certainly makes for a much safer environment. And by using remote heads on some of these lights, like I do with the Pixar Pro City 600, I can minimize the amount of weight I'm putting on the top of the stand. So if I am putting the light on a boom arm, by using the extension head, means I'm putting very, very little weight and strain on the end of that meaning I don't have to weigh it off as much and again making it a much safer process in turn. So there you have it guys, some very quick tips with stuff that certainly saves me a lot of time and energy in my studio. If you've got any comments or anything you'd like to add by all means stick them down below. If you like what you've seen don't forget to give us a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel while you're here. My name's Chris Ord, thanks for watching.